Abby. Hi. What's up, Suze? I feel like we should leave the bass in the back of this one. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's like the whole vibe. So what's happening today is um, Abby and I are actually in downtown Salt Lake. Um, We are here on Friday. You're probably hearing this on Tuesday the 21st. Um, We came downtown to the Kiln Studios, Mm -hmm. and we are to record with a couple of girls that are in town for the NBA All-Star Game, um, Callie Ann Barnett and Lily Shimbashi. Um, Lily will be tomorrow, Callie Ann's today. Um, It's been so fun. There's like a whole vibe and energy down there. There's a lot of people. And everyone in this studio especially is just like working and grinding Mm -hmm. and right outside because it's Gateway there's this whole event going on. It just feels very high energy. Yes and there's so many people down here. So many people. Yeah so um, we we have Callie Ann up first today like I said. Um, She came in. I loved how Callie Ann was just like so open. Oh my gosh yeah. And so positive. Yep. So kind. Um, after we recorded, she took us across the, we're at the gateway. She took us right across the the lawn to what's called Counterpoint. And it's the store that she's running for the NBA. It's a NBA, did she say pop-up? It's no. like a, well. Concept she, store. She, concept store, yeah. So it's like, it's the, she said that, <clears throat> she said it really well. She was like, it's a chance for us to actually design what we want and put actual like jazz things on um, really nice material, really nice quality and sustainable things, right? Yeah. Because that's as per her style. Sorry, it's a private label apparel Mm, store. Yep. Um, So we went over there with her. She showed us all the cool things. Uh, First off, you walk in and the logo is incredible. So good. And then she told us that Davis and JP had designed it. The Kim's, actual source boys. And Kim's husband, Kim's right? Kim's husband, yeah. <laughs> Kim. Um, yeah. Started from the bottom phase. Cherry pick. Yeah. yeah. So actually, we should just call him Kim's husband and JP designed it. Yes. 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 <laughs> the logo. And um, it's stunning. It's it's right like front and center. You walk in, it's just right there. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And um, then she walked us around the store. I ended up getting a jacket. What'd you get? I got the NBA 2023 t-shirt. T-shirt. For the all-star t-shirt. And we both got a hat. Um, uh, or I got or two you hats. Got, you, got a, you got two hats. And, a and I got a candle. Yeah. And it's a really cool store. I think it's going to be up for a while. So if you're in yeah. Utah, you're in Salt Lake, definitely go and check it out. It's got NBA All-Star stuff there. Plus there's just, she was wearing a sweatsuit that was so cute. It was light blue. Light blue. It so was like cute. the old, like the old jazz colors. Mm-hmm. Like that, the light blue and the purple, mm-hmm. lots of purple and stuff. Yeah. So and she's cool. a creative director. She just put her own spin on it and... Um, it was awesome. It was awesome to see her do her thing. Yeah. I loved how, yeah, I like how you said she was so open and like fr- coming from someone like I'm not really into sports or anything, but like hearing her story about this entire other side of working with the NBA of like, no, there's this whole creative uh, part of it. There's this like insight where you're designing like clothes and you're designing. And she was also, I really loved how she, so she goes into on this recording talking about um, the sustainability and how they would go into um, some of the players' closets and find clothes that they never wore. And they would uh, use those for other people to wear them. So that Resell they, them, yeah. Yeah, resell them. So it was like this recycle process. Up, upcycle, yes. Upcycle, yeah. yeah. She's very thoughtful. She's very cool. I know you guys are going to love it. Um, thank you, Kellyanne, for... <laughs> thank you, Kellyanne. For... <laughs> I can't say her name. <laughs> I'm so tired. Thank you, Kellyanne, for coming on. Welcome back to Started From The Bottom. I am your host, Susan Peterson, and I am so excited. Today we have Callie Ann Barnett in studio. Welcome, Callie. Hi. Hi. Callie Ann is an American celebrity fashion stylist. She's a co-founder of the shop, a pop-up shop. The Wait, Shop Miami. The Shop Miami. Um, a fa- fashion brand that she started with her friend and client, Dwayne Wade. She received her undergraduate degree from Florida International University in business administration. She also attended New York's Fashion Institute of Technology, where she kicked off her styling career in 2007. Some of her clients have included Dwayne Wade, Usain Bolt, Donovan Mitchell, Jordan Clarkson, our favorite, right, Abby? (laughs) And D-Nice. Callie-Anne is the creative director for Counterpoint, the Utah Jazz private label apparel, and a creative consultant. Callie-Anne lives with her husband, her uh, firefighter husband, Sky, and two adorable children in Miami. We Two things about this podcast that I feel like you should know right off the bat— we love Jordan Clarkson. Uh, he's awesome. And we love firefighters. 
Uh, firefighters are awesome too. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm with you guys. So you hit every point. I'm so excited you're here. Um, so Kellyanne, how did you get started? How did I get started? I mean, so I was a little, little, little sperm and an egg. No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously. Um, in in the fashion space, I actually wanted to work for the FBI. Um, so when I went to school, I started for accounting, and then. Um, I was like, wait a second, I don't want to work for the FBI under the like money laundering embezzlement. Like I was like, what am I like? That's not even me. So I finished my degree. I switched to business administration with a minor in criminal justice. Um, decide I was 20 years old because I did dual enrollment. So all of my friends are still in school. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to move to New York, go to FIT. I'm going to be a buyer because that's all I knew was like either designer or buyer. And I can't draw or so like, I can't draw a straight line. I can't even draw a stick person. It's terrible. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm be a buyer. So moved to New York, went to FIT, started work. I did like a quick like job and I was like, wait, being a buyer is just like, you know, accounting just with like, you know, products. Close. And I was like, yeah. nope, don't want to do that. So I one of the classes I took was called photo styling where we did the photography that we were the editor, we were the producer and the stylist. And that was the first time I'd ever heard about the term a stylist. Like now sty everyone's a stylist, but like back then, like it was not something that like was just common knowledge. So I was like, wait, it's like being a designer, but you don't have to like draw or so, and you get to use other people's designs. So I was like, that's what I want to do. And you know, like now everyone has, all this access to information. So if you want to do something, it's easy to find it. Here I'm like, okay, I'm in New York City trying to figure it out, you know, like trying to meet people, um, trying to meet photographers. Like, what do I need to do? Finally, I got connected with this photographer. Um, and this is one of these like right place, right moments, like divine intervention. So I was, it's was Halloween. I'm at this party and it's like, I'm, I'm actually sober, like sober at this time. Everybody is raging drunk. I'm sober. I'm like, this party's terrible. I want to leave. I say to my friend, like, hey, let's leave. And she's like, okay, cool. We get, we leave. We walk out. She goes, hey, I have to use the bathroom. And I'm like, Ur. she's like, can you pull back around? Pull back around. She goes to the bathroom. She's walking out with this guy, this photographer. And I'm like, girl, I just want to go home. And mm -hmm. she's like, no, this photographer, he was with like little X. Little X was a DJ. I mean, it was a um, director back in the day that I like had the huge, like biggest crush on. So I'm like, okay, well, hi. And he's like, oh, I'm Jonathan Mannion. I'm a photographer. And just so happened that Jonathan Mannion had shot his first music video for Shaggy, which was a friend of mine. And I was just, Shaggy was like, hey, introduce her to like the right people. This is what she wants to do. Um, so I met with him. He connected me with a bunch of stylists who I did an internship with, interned my butt off. So I was in school, interning, bartending, like doing all the things and worked my way up to be an assistant and then from an assistant, a stylist. So that's how I got my start. Oh my gosh. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry. I, I tried to no, cram it all in there. I love it. And you can honestly take as long as you want. Um, but first of all, uh, interning is like such a, an, an amazing and important way to like get your start. Um, I've been in business since 2009 and interns are very different now than they were. I'm not trying to pull Kim Kardashian like no one wants to work these days, but like, let's. <laughs> oh, oh no. Trust me. I know. Like, let's talk about like, cause I've been an intern before. It is the best. It is the best thing you can ever do mm -hmm. because you're actually getting the knowledge that you need from somebody who is working in that craft. Like for me, styling people are like, Oh, you know, like, Everyone can't be a stylist. It's actually like a trade job. So it's like blacksmithing. Like yeah. you need to learn like the trade. You need to learn the craft of that trade. And yes. so for me, it's like, you know, I used to have five, six interns at any given time who were competing to be an assistant. Now finding like an intern, it's like, wait, but when am I getting paid? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm paying you with knowledge. I'm paying you with relationships with contacts with opportunity like that is way more than me paying you some money because if you want to make this transactional where it's just like you did this job you're not going to get as much out of it but then yeah. again I feel like people are content with turning in C work and I'm like I need an A plus all the time so like you see that difference and they're like oh when's the job done and I'm like you just said it when the job is done. Like, right. what are we, like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, we're not going home until like the task is complete yes. or like, yeah. So it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. But I, you know, every now and then you find a diamond in a rough, in the rough. And that's like 
those are the ones that you, you know, nurture until they get too big for their bridges and you have to kick them out the nest. <laughs> right. And you're always excited to see them move on. Like yeah. I'm always so happy for people, but then it's like, oh, here we go again. I got to find someone. Got to do it all over again. Yeah. Because I will, I, I'll take care of you. Like if you come and you work for me, I will take care of you. You will be so happy. But, um, I just need you to do it. Do yeah. the things. Yes. And, and don't think you're too good to do the things like just now. I was literally walking with Ryan Smith, like Qualtrics, the owner, owner of, of the, the jet. Jazz, like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, hey, you know, I'm going to grab this coffee for you that was in the car. And he picked, and he's like, walks in and he's like bringing coffee to, you know, people at the counterpoint store. And I'm just like, like, that's, yeah. you're never too big to do anything. Like, yeah. and that's, that's the people that you see succeed. The ones who are like, okay, wh what do you need? You need me to sweep this up? Cool. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately it's like, it's still getting the job done regardless of where you're at. It's like you're getting the job done, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, and then this is Shaggy wasn't me, right? Yeah, Shaggy wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my 13-year-old boy found that song, and I'm like, you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> my 9-year-old, yes. I think it was in like a cartoon or something. Like, it was had like, to have been. Um, and it was like Mr. Boombastic. Or it was yes. like, it's like Mr. Boombastic. So everyone, I'm like, how do you know this song? My 9-year-old, I'm like. Uh, okay. <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. Um, okay. So talk to me about like growing up. Have you always been a stylist? Um, I, I like to think I've always been stylish. My pictures from, you know, the nineties and two thousands say otherwise, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but was it, was it nice in the two? Like, were you good then? Oh, I mean, yeah, it was, it, it was definitely on point and trendy. Um, right. And that is why now that I know better, like I am not a trend follower at mm. all. Like, I wear what works for me, um, what I'm confident in, and it's not about anything that's trendy. I Most of my, like, favorite pieces now that people love, I'm like, oh, this old thing? And they're like, seriously, I'm like, no, seriously, this old thing. Like, it's so old, and that's what people usually love the most. So, yes, I've always been stylish. Um, <laughs> <laughs> has it always been good? Eh, that's debatable. Were you? Did you style your friends or your family or... Um, I wouldn't say I styled my friends and family, uh, but I know like, like me and my cousins, we had like this little group we were called like three drops of honey and we like, we're all oh, matching yes. outfits. <laughs> this is when Winnie the Pooh became like a thing again. Uh -huh. um, so we'd have like matching outfits to school and high school. We put it out. We wouldn't repeat for at least a minimum of like 30 days, okay. you know, the whole, or for like a nine week period. So, so wait, you guys are showing up to high school wearing matching outfits. Of course. Yes. Why not? Why not? Why, why not? Why not? Why not? Um, okay. Wait, back to your um, favorite pieces. What are you looking for then? So when I look for a piece, like one, I look for something that I can have for years to come. Like I don't want it to be something I look back and I'm just like, why did I buy this? Like. You know, you have so many of those in your closet that you're just like, why is this here? I've literally felt that way about almost every designer bag I've bought. Re especially recently. Yes. Like, like my Chanel. I'm like, why am I? I don't what? want this. It, what what, what yes. are you going to do with it? Like, I, I don't like things with logos. Like, I'm not, like, anything that's, like, branded logo, unless it's benefiting me, like, counterpoint right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Then I wear that logo all day long. But, you know, if it's someone else's logo that's not putting money in my pocket, like, I am not a free, like, you know, billboard for you. Yeah. Um, And... And I just like, I like different pieces, like, you know, that really speak to my personality because I think that's what your style is. It's really an extension of your personality and what you want people to see. Like, without even speaking a word, you get, like, who I am. You get my essence, my aura, just from how I'm dressed. Yeah, but you also, I now I'm going out on a limb, but and you can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like you really like to make people feel good about themselves, so. I do, like... You know, people think styling is just like, oh, you're putting clothes on. No, it is a very, very like personal job. You are a like a therapist the whole time and you're getting to see them like stripped down naked, basically. And they're talking about their insecurities, what they don't like to what they don't like about themselves. And this is a way like, you know, to build up their confidence. And it's so great to see somebody go from like, oh, I don't you know, I don't look good in this and to like walking out and like when they like passed a mirror a few times and they check themselves out like that moment for me is like my proudest moment when I see them like double back to look at themselves or they do like a little like dance in the mirror or they want to like walk out and show somebody like that to me is like, OK, I'm building up like, you know, from it's unfortunately from the outside, but I really feel like it starts from the inside because you have to put your confidence on first. That's mm. why I tell every single client, like put your confidence on first and then you can rock anything. 
Like yeah. anything. Okay, so then back to my question. Do you feel like you've always been that way? Like you always just like to make people feel good and then clothes has kind of become your medium? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a social butterfly. I like to like, you know, kiss the babies and shake the hands. And I've gotten in trouble my from like school just to talk from talking to people. Because like that's what this is about. Like that's why we're here right now is to like, you know, meet with each other and share experiences and and how do you make that person's experience better like I try you know I try not to be angry for any extended period of time because I'm just like for what like you know what well first of all someone else has it like way worse than me yeah. first of all like I talk about super first world problems like I don't I can't even imagine a problem I have that's like not re- like you know repairable and it's like you can actually determine how your mood is most of the times like you can you know smile through it if I'm on the phone and I'm annoyed I try to smile so that that annoyance it's like no you hear happiness and a lot of times people don't think about what someone else is going through it's like what am I going through and you know how is that like going to impact everybody instead of being like you know what I don't know what that person is going through so let me try my best to make sure that their experience with me is really good and that might actually make the difference in their experience throughout the day yeah yeah I love that um like where does your where does your confidence come from like how did you know you could do all this (laughs) my dad tells me I've been the exact same way since I was two years old so I don't know if I was like your personality my personality I have been exactly the same way it's obviously you know things have gotten like a little more refined and (laughs) you know I've learned manners and stuff and but for the most part like I've been determined like my persistence is my best and worst quality you know because like (laughs) I'm gonna keep going and keep going and Sometimes it works out and it's like, but sometimes if you're on the other end where I'm like, no, like this is what we should do. And I keep pushing through, but I usually only push when it's something that I'm really passionate about. Like if I'm not passionate, I'm I'm a love it or hate it type girl. Mm -hmm. Like, so if I love it, like I'm all in, absolutely love it. Like, let's go. If I hate it, I'm like, eh, eh, I I have no opinion on it. Like whether we do it or not, don't need to do it, you know? But I, I don't know. I, I think that I have, because even my my mom is, like, very, very, like, nice lady. (laughs) Like, does it? Actually, she's kind of pushy, though, but, like, low-key pushy. So, I think, (laughs) I think, like, she's, like, (laughs) because we're always, like, how did you get me to waste so much time, mom? Like, she secretly does it. And before you know it, like, you're doing everything she asked and you don't even know it. Um, Where my dad is, like, the complete opposite, where he's, like, going to, like, tell you this is what he wants this is what you're going to do so I think somewhere along the line I was able to take like the best and the worst and make it my own yeah so and it works for you yeah good parents good family good upbringing lots of support oh that's amazing okay so four years ago you joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints um can we talk about that and then like do you feel like it's changed your business or your approach to business at all Um, so I would say, yeah, in terms of like one, I mean, once again, this alignment and right place, right time or whatever it is. But after I was baptized, I got a phone call from Donovan Mitchell's mom. That's like, Hey, do you want to work with Donovan? And this wasn't because I was baptized. This was just, you know, coincidentally and, you know, coming to then Utah for Donovan and then working with Jordan and as a member you know, I did a church, uh, like a Mormon message or whatever the videos are called. And I've been like, I've, it's gotten such a, it's been well received that I think it's helped me with, you know, now coming and working for the Utah Jazz because I met Ryan and Ashley. And so was, I built this community around that's very supportive. Like if there is one, I think, message that I, that I want to put out about being a member, it's like the support that you get. Like there is, you know, and I'm about like, I've had support in my family. So now to have that same support, like in my career and like my other community, it's, it's awesome. And then it's also like the time that I spend doing things. Like I try to be very, very intentional with my time. And I don't find myself in those situations where it's like, is this the best situation? Like, or going out or needing to be at a party that's like so irrelevant to like, you know, the next step or progression. So I would say it definitely has changed my business model because before I used to be like, oh, I need to be out and be as many places and be seen as much as possible. And I was like, no, I don't. 
No, I don't. Like, God got my back. God knows what I need. Trust the process. Yeah. Um, how did you... Like, it was a huge life shift for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, Maybe it was totally the same. Like, you know, I went from being professional partier number one to <laughs> professional, like, <laughs> church member number one. Like, yes. I, like I said, when I'm all in, I'm all in. Yes. But, um, no, it was, so the, like, the funny thing is, is I stopped drinking two years before I became a member, which most people are like, oh, you know, oh, you don't drink anymore because you're a member. I'm like, no, no. Like, I actually quit drinking. And that's like, you know, a testament to like, God knowing what you need in order, like he putting all the things in the place that I needed to, you know, to be willing and able to accept. So, I mean, yeah, complete life change in terms of like, you know, I'm, I'm going to church every Sunday. Like I had stopped going to church when I was 18 years old. I decided I wasn't going to believe in Jesus or God anymore because it's been used to like justify so many like heinous acts for millennia like you know yeah. time after time and i was just like i don't want to believe anymore but now it's even when i talk about god people are like wait wait wait, wait, wait. callie ann like and there's like they're, they're still the same me because i like on the table dancing in the club and talking to somebody and people are like oh what were you guys talking about and i'm like jesus like and they're like <laughs> no you weren't and i was like yes I'm, I was talking about Jesus in the club. Like, like we love Jesus. <laughs> like, I love Jesus. And it's usually because someone comes up to me and they're like, you're glowing. And mm. I'm like, oh, that's the light of Jesus. Like, that's the light of Christ yeah. coming out through me. And they're like, really? And I'm like, and then I just tell them in the club <laughs> my story. I do. I do love it. People are always like, oh, Susan, you're 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 a member. And I'm like, yeah, I love you. That's my thing, too, is I just love Jesus. Yeah. And um, I like I love your approach and I love how they're like, you're not fitting in a mold. Like there's not a mold to, for you to fit in. <laughs> and I feel like it just is like allows other people to be themselves as well. And I think like I was put here at this time, at this place, like for this reason, because this is me. This is what the gathering of Israel looks like. Yeah. It looks like everybody, like there is no mold yeah. for God's children. And that's what we, you know, that's what we know. Like God loves everyone and he loves all his children. He wants us all to come back together and we all look different. So it's just, you know, a reflection of God's children. And I think eventually once we all get to a good place that this is, this is going to be the norm. Like, you know, yeah. and also I, I love that I can share my experiences with, you know, people who have either grown up in the church, who have kids who are now growing up in the church and having a difficulties with like, why shouldn't I do this? Why shouldn't I be like in and of the world? Mm -hmm. And I can explain to them like, Oh no, I've lived on both sides. Like I have been in and of the world and I've made this conscious decision to come and embrace like God in my life to take on the name of Jesus Christ and to follow him because it honestly makes me happier. And Mm -hmm. I have, both sides and nothing drastic happened. I didn't kill anybody. Everyone's like, who'd you kill? You know, because normally <laughs> that's what happens. You have to kill somebody to find like, yeah. you know, to quit drinking or to find like God. Like, no, nothing. I had my, my story is so like, girl, first world problems. It doesn't even make sense. It's, it's not first world problems because I, we, you've told me before, but you were, you'd gotten to a point where you were just feeling like, I want to say miserable, but I also don't want to put words in your mouth. So it was like, I, so with my son, my first son, he's nine Prince. Um, you know, when you have a child, you make a promise to them. You promise you're going to do everything for them to make their life as, as like awesome as possible. And you know, and so as my, as I would travel, I'd go in my son's room, I put my hand on his back and I would say like, you know, you're my perfect, perfect. You're going to change the world. Like, you know, use your talents for good. Like, and just all these positive affirmations. And then like, as I would say them, I started to realize like my actions actually really like can alter his life. It can really change how he grows up because whether it's like from drinking and driving, you know, whether it's, um, just, getting into some like situation out in the street because I'm out and about like that can change how he grows up. And so that promise that I made to him when I, you know, when I decided to have him, 
I wasn't, I wasn't following. I wasn't living up to that promise. I was not keeping that promise that I made to him. And so that started to weigh like really heavy on me. And I think, oh, I'm tearing up right now. <laughs> you got me, Susan. Oh, you got me. <laughs> but, <Yes>. um, <laughs> you know, so it's like, I, and I was like, okay, you know, and I kept having this feeling like I need a change in my life. And it really hit this moment where I'm on my way to Mykonos. This just is like the fluff part where people are like, seriously, Callie on my way to Mykonos to meet Dwayne Dwayne Wade and Usain Bolt. It's Usain Bolt's birthday party. Um, I flew American. My husband flew. I don't even know why he flew Delta, but he ended up flying with Dwayne like part of the way private. I flew American. I don't even know why because I hate American Airlines. But the flight was delayed. Got I got to Milan and I had a chance between getting my bags or making my connecting flight. I chose my bags because you know I need my stuff, and which caused a ripple effect. That flight was delayed. That flight another flight was delayed. And I'm in Athens. Won't they tell me I won't be able to get out to the morning? So I missed Usain's party, which I was supposed to like help with. I missed like partying with Dwayne. Like everyone's there, and I'm like, I picked my stuff and my bags, like you know, over being there for people. And I started mm-hmm. to realize like the world that I was building and creating, like it was like built around stuff and all this material. And I was like, just like I was like, I need a reef. Like I need a complete. Like, I'm crying, like, in tears. I'm not at this party. But, like, you know, like, we know what tears are. Tears are, like, you know, God, like, working through you and in you. Mm -hmm. And I was just, like, when I get back from Mykonos, I am going to fresh start. Like, I am not drinking, not doing any party favor stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, having a, like, I'm cleaning out my closet, not shopping for six months. Because for me, that's a fast. Like, I I only think I ate the today like I fasting is not a big deal not shopping for six months Food fasting that is that is a fast I um, um one time didn't buy shoes for a whole year <laughs> that's a fast that's a fast. yes I agree yes and so I was like you know um when I get back to when I get back to Miami and that's exactly what I did I I raged in Mykonos I had one last hurrah and I got back and you know never looked back like I don't miss it people are like oh do you miss drinking not at all. Mm-hmm. Not one bit, like, at all. And I remember I even saying to my best friend, I was like, I want to be perfect. And she was just like, oh, Callie-Ann, that's such a callie thing to say. <laughs> and I'm like, no, like, I want, like, everyone should strive to, like, perfection. And once again, it's like, I didn't realize that that was God giving me the words. Like, because there's only one person that we describe as perfect. And I was saying, I want to be more like Jesus. Like, I didn't mm. realize it until, like, I'm reading. And I was like, oh, yeah, this, yes. Yeah. Um, so I think the way we feel about Jordan Clarkson is the way you feel about Alma the Younger. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my homeboy. Uh, that is my homeboy. Like, we have so much in common. Like, yes. <laughs> I love him. Um, if you're listening, it's a it's a book for the, for the church that we belong to called the Book of Mormon. And it's my favorite thing you've ever put on the internet, Kellyanne, actually, is how hard you ride for Alma the Younger. <laughs> I mean, like, like, if you've ever, like, been a person that was like, Mm-mm, I don't believe in Jesus. Like, mm-hmm. Nope, God's not for me. Like, and then had that moment where God's like, No, 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 I am real. Like, you, I, I feel it. I like, I that moment where I like had in my head my like moment where I realized that okay, you know what, Jesus is real. Like, I I felt, I I feel how Alma felt. And then when he goes off to never be heard from again, oh, every time it gets me. Every time, like, where are you? <laughs> Uh, he's partying in Mykonos. That's where he is, yes. <laughs> um, okay, I love that about you. Um, what is the hardest part about your job? The hardest part about my job is probably not um, not being able to not do it. <laughs> like, you know, it's like I, if I start something, like I just have to do it. Like, I have to just keep going, and sometimes to my detriment, mm. sometimes to, like, I'm like, okay, it's it's good. Like, Callianne, it is good. Like, you're you're fine. You can go out in the world with this project. Like, I'm always like, huh, but I have to, fi- I have to fix that. I'm tweaking it. I have to do this. And, you know, and I think with most creatives, it's like, it's never right, you know? Mm-hmm. And you just want to keep, like, fixing and fixing, and it's like sometimes you need somebody to be like, no, this, this has to go out, because otherwise, you know, 
creatives would just keep it in our for ourselves until it's perfect and once again it's never going to be perfect so I think that would be the hardest part of my job um and other hardest part of my job is being a hyphen it's so there's nothing I can't do like okay <laughs> so it's like it's one of those things where it's like oh you can't do this for me I'll do it myself mm-hmm. I'll do it myself and I just do a lot of things myself where it's like okay maybe I should look for somebody else that can do it yeah so I spend a lot of time just because I want to see something come to fruition, I just do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I, um, I, I have the disease where I feel like I can figure anything out. Like anything is figure outable and it gets me in trouble sometimes. Oh yeah. No, I know. It's like that late night till 4am in the morning, like figuring the things out. And you're like, somebody could have done this so much faster. Uh They literally could have like, push two buttons and it would have been done, but I yeah. just spent four hours fixing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I love the approach that you're taking to sustainability and fashion with Shop Miami. Can you talk to me about, like, what brought that about? So for me, um, you know, fashion is the number two polluter of the environment. So it's like... Is that a- real? That's for reals. Like, after oil, it is fashion, like, which is crazy Oh my God, that is shocking to me. Yeah, there's like a whole um, mountain in, I think it's like Peru. It's like this big like sand dunes, but they're all of like fast fashion. So instead of, you know, spending the money, these companies, instead of spending the money to dispose of it, what they do is they send it to like Central America to like, oh, to give away. And it stays in containers. And then once it's not picked up, like I think it's like 20% of it is stolen. Then like, 10% 10% of it is actually like bought and paid. The rest of it gets dumped into like this, like the sand dune of like clothing. Like you have to look it up. It's insane. But so for I... me, it's like, as I embark on the shop Miami where I'm, um, you know, I'm selling new clothing and new like goods. I was like, how do I make sure that I am giving back? And part of that is, you know, I've been a stylist for, 15, 16 years. And I know like these guys, they have so much clothes in their closet. Some of it's never been worn. Some of it's, you know, been worn for 10 seconds as they walk through the tunnel. And it's like, okay, how do we give this a second life? Like, how do we make sure that this, that these pieces are, you know, living again and and going to somebody that is going to use them and wear them. And that's where, you know, the shop, the sorry, that's where NBA closets came in. So it's like me and a couple of stylists, we got together and, we um we went through the guys' closets, cleaned it out, and you know put it for sale. So guys, it's like people get to buy clothes that Dwayne Wade wore, Jimmy Butler wore, Chris Paul wore, um, Carmelo Anthony wore, Mike Conley wore, Jordan Clarkson wore. Like you know you get to wear like these pieces that you see them in. Now you can own them. And and then you're not contributing to the. Mountains. And then I'm not contributing to. I'm shocked by that actually. It's. Wild. So what can the regular person do? I would say really just be very cognizant of your purchases. Like buy things that you know will last. Um, Because as as long as we continue to feed into the whole fast fashion trend, then they're going to continue producing it. Like, you know, like so be very like intentional with your purchases. And of course, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be that like you, you, you know, that splurge or that random time where you just like, you just give in to the urge to buy, but try to buy things that last. Yeah. Yeah. Or if something breaks, I feel like tailor shops have really, we forgot about them, oh. but like if something breaks, I've just found a new tailor shop and I'll take it to the tailor and it just gives it like a fresh life or, or like get your jeans taken in instead of throwing them away or whatever, you yeah. know, like there's so, and it's like remixing your pieces. Like how do you keep remixing them now with social media on top of that? It's like people don't want to be seen in the same outfit over and over again because they're posting everything, you know, outfit of the day. <laughs> so it like makes it hard where it's before you'd wear something and you wouldn't care. But now it's like, okay, I have to have something new all the time. And I think that also feeds into like the fast fashion is that, you know, people are posting their outfits and it's like, try to rework it. Like people are like, Oh, I bet you never wear anything twice. And I'm like, dude, I just actually wore this like last week, you know, like even with my clients, they're like, Oh, I'm sure they never repeat. And I'm like, no, no, they did. It's just being a lot more creative with how you use pieces or even finding like finding a uniform. I love when people have like that uniform that's theirs. Like, you know, they have their like white shirt or their jeans or whatever it is that like works um, like for them. Okay. I love a uniform. 
I mine is just all black just because yeah. it's so easy. <laughs> it's just easy though. Um, yes. Like it's, it is. It <laughs> Are is you easy. anti all black? No, I'm not anti. I mean, it's very like chic and classic, and you can't go wrong with all black. But I also like color. Like. I sometimes like being a cartoon character, so I like to wear, like, the brightest thing in the room that, you know, most people are like, I can't believe you're wearing that, but it works for you. And I'm like, yeah, that's confidence. Put that on <laughs> before <laughs> Put I got dressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love you in color, actually. I love your pink hair. Do you miss your pink hair? Um, sometimes, but that's what wigs are for. Exactly. I, I have no problem throwing on a wig whenever I want to, I, but I love this blonde. It's like, so pretty. This is, like, my favorite thing. you like, after the red, because I had red for about 13 years, um, this blonde, I think it works for like my older, more mature self. That's, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I work for a corporation and organization now, so yeah. I have to be respectable. Yeah. You're <laughs> employed by the Utah jazz. Yeah. Hello. You've got a corporate job. <laughs> no, but this was an accident too. Like what happened? So I went blonde and that was fun and I had blonde hair and it was amazing. And then I was walking through Walgreens and I was like, Ooh, that ash color looks amazing. Let me buy this ash colored dye. So it's late night. It's actually, um, I have to fly to LA for Dwayne's birthday the next day. And I'm like, all right, let me put this, you know, rinse on my hair. So I put this, a, a toner on my hair and I start like packing my clothes, doing all the things. And you're only supposed to keep toner on for like 10 minutes. So like 40 minutes goes by. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to take it out. So I go take it out and it's like, it's like great. It's not even like ash color anymore. Now it's like, like, gray like your grandma gray um <laughs> and i'm like oh okay i can't now live i'll just guess i'll wear a wig and then it starts coming out like yeah, your hair starts just starts out. like falling out like i'm like it's just breaking and breaking like every single day it's like breaking more so i go to sky to my husband's barber and i'm like take it off just take it did off did you buzz it oh uh, i didn't buzz it i did really i was like an inch and i was like and then first thing sky says to me he's like Ah, you look like that. You look like um that crazy aunt that gets that short haircut. I'm like, thanks, Stop. babe. Ups. <laughs> I was like, guy. Thank you, babe. That's exactly what I want to hear right now. Right now, right yeah. Now. It looks good. I love it on you. It, it is grown, and it took a while to get here, but it's finally where I love it. That's beautiful. Okay, so shop Miami flooded in October. Talk to me about what happened. So that actually happened in September. Oh, it sorry, took me September. about. It took me. Four weeks to realize what happened. <laughs> you know, it took not, you four weeks to get, wrap your head around to it. Wrap my head uh, around it, it because yeah. when it happens, like I got a phone call from my alarm company, and they're like, "Your alarm is going off," and I'm like, "Okay." So I call my sister. I'm like, "Hey, the alarm's going off. Like, check the cameras." So my ca my sister runs this store for me, and so she looks. She's like, "It's." She goes, "It's not. I can't get on the camera." So I'm like, "Oh crap!" Like she calls our um, camera guy, our security guy, and he's like. No, you have him call the police. Like, stuff's everywhere. And he's like, wait, wait, wait. No, there's there's water. He's like, there's a guy. He's like, oh, your place is flooding. And so right then, my sister actually gets on the cameras at the same time. And she's like, she's like, it's Eric. There's, like, water everywhere. Like, everything's... And I'm like, wait, what? Like, what happened? The I have a site next to me that's building this, like, 300 units of apartments. A crane dropped a form through the roof and... Not only did it just go through the roof, it hit the water sprinklers. And the thing about the water sprinklers is they don't turn off until someone comes and turns them off. The fire department actually pulled up and they're like, oh, no fire, and left them on. So they it was just water. just On all the stuff. On all the stuff. Like, they hit the most, like, expensive rooms with, like, I had, like, the sneaker collection that was there, like, all gone. Um, like, you know, dead stock, like. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Um, just like Rick Owens, Valentine. It was it was a lot of stuff. And, you know, so now I'm like, okay, get up, get ready, like go down there. And uh, my landlords are so awesome. They already had like the water mitigation people in, like, you know, okay, what, what do we need to do to like get this repaired? Um, and unfortunately, fixing the water, like getting the water out actually caused more damage because like my floors got scraped and I have like these beautiful white epoxy floors. And, you know, I was, we have this, where the hole is, there's this like clear, they have it all barricaded off. And I'm just looking at it one day. I'm like, this is my worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was just like, and it hit me. I was like, 
all of my hard work, like we just like for real open in July. And now it's like, I'm staring at this big gaping hole, like surrounded by plastic. And I was like, I'm going to make a haunted house because that's what it feels <laughs> like right now. And so I made a haunted house out of it. That's, you know. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So I turned it into a horror maze. Like, because I have these, like, my lights are LED lights and I just made them red. And I was like, this would be, a, you know, like the way that my shop is set up, it's set up like a maze. So then I just, you know, started bringing in elements and turned it into a horror maze. <laughs> Is it back functioning then as a shop? So we're not back functioning. We functioning. We do different events. So we'll rent out the entire space. Um, we've actually taken down our like dividers that make the rooms. Um, so we're we're semi functional, but we're not the shop like Miami the way we should be in all of its amazing glory. Um, but we're still, you know, we're there and we're 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 now at the shop Salt Lake City. So it's like. The concept, and that's what the concept is, it's it's able, we can move around. Um, we host pop-ups for different brands. So you come into Miami, you want to test out the market and not have to deal with the headache of, you know, finding staff, finding a place, inventory, point of sale, all that. We do all that for you. So, you know, it's it's plug and play. And this gave us an opportunity, too, to bring it over to Salt Lake City. So, yeah. you know, I believe everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. You know, trust the process. <sighs> Yeah, for for sure. In February, you say we say that, yeah, yeah. But like, how was it as like a setback? Um, it's definitely hurt because I had brands that were supposed to come in, you know, especially for Art Basel. Art Basel is one of our like busiest times, and you know, I had to cancel those brands. And I had and this process, this project started back in 2019, and our spot wasn't ready. So I came up with this idea in 2018. Uh, we weren't ready for what was going to be Super Bowl in 2020, we had a temp spot, opened the temp spot. It was doing successful, extended our lease, COVID hit. So it's like, come on, can I catch a break? But you know what? Once again, trust the process. Everything happens the way it's supposed to. Hopefully by the time we get ready, by the time we're ready to open, that was 300 units are built. People are in there and that's just built in customers. Yeah. So I like, that's, that's, I just have to stay positive because otherwise, like, you know, sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying. Yeah. And that's, you know, you, you, you've got to dig deep. You have to, you know, try to, try to like figure out like, what can you still do in that space? Like, how can you still continue to build on your brand when, you know, you're, you had to one, go to all the people who you had leases with and be like, Hey guys, here goes back your money. Cause, um, I can't have you in my place right now yeah and then you the part that really sucks for me is like because it's on insurance we're sitting here waiting like I can't even actively get new leases because yeah. I don't know when that's going to happen like so when that, the money's gonna come yeah through. so that like waiting hurts because now it's like all right um these relationships that I've made you know that I'm like okay no it's gonna happen it's gonna happen. like I I can't for you, especially like where you're like, I'll do whatever. I'll figure it out. Like yeah. waiting is like yeah. not your favorite place to be. I no, assume it's, it's, it's not, it's not at all. <laughs> have you always been super optimistic? I have been. I, I feel like, you know, the sun will come out tomorrow. Um, I think obviously I, I've, I've had a good life. Things have aligned and worked out for me. So I think that plays a part in it. Um, I also don't believe that like bad things happen. I think things happen. And the lesson that you get out of it determines whether or not it's a bad thing. Like, if you get a lesson out of it, that wasn't a bad thing. It was just something that happened. Mm -hmm. um, versus, like, if you don't learn that lesson, then that's when you start to think, like, oh, this bad thing happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think, I think it's all part of the process. It's like, this is this is why we're here. Um, I also, I, I'm like, I believe, like, you have, you have to have faith. It, it, it makes things better. Like, it really does make things better when you, like, when you act from a place of like, you know, faith and love and like that positive energy. And I feel like also like the universe conspires to like make things happen when you're actively pushing forward. Um, do you have like mantras that you live by or that you repeat to yourself? I mean, I don't really, I, I don't think I have any. Um, I mean, I sign off on all of my emails. I'm like eternal optimist. Oh, um, I love that. And 
I, I, I don't know. I don't think I have any, but I'm sure if somebody else, like, if you ask somebody else that question, they're like, uh, yeah, you do. You okay. absolutely Well, do. ask Noel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I do say, I actually do say, like, my glass is always half full, even if it's you know, half full of empty. Like, yeah. it's, it's half full of something. Yeah, it's half full. Yeah. yeah. It's got something in it. Um, what is one lesson that you learned early on in your career that is still true today? Um, I would say one, like, get the job done. Like that was like, I, I was lucky enough to have, um, the stylist that, well, she was an assistant. I was an intern and there'd be times where I'm like, I don't, I'm not doing that. Like, why would I do that? And she's like, girl, just get the job done and then you can do whatever you want. Just yeah. get the job done and then you can do whatever you want. And I think people like, sometimes they're like, oh, I just want to do whatever I want. Yeah. But you got it. Do the thing. You got to do things to then do whatever you want. Just get it done. Like, finish it and then do what you want. So, Yeah, there's like, um, to that point, like, people just want to do whatever they want. There, You can do whatever you want. Like, you could definitely do it. But you're missing paying your dues, which is learning the process. And then you're, like, kind of just out on a limb, like... You don't know, you don't know how you got there. You don't know how you're, where you're going to go from there. So like really putting in the time is like so valuable. Yeah. No, it, it is. And it, it also makes, it makes you value it more. Like when you, when you've gone through it, like mm-hmm. you, instead of it just coming or instead of you like, you know, getting it easier or moving on or now you have like this client, it's like, no, I worked for this. This is mine. No yeah. one can take it away from me. Like I actually put in the time and effort. It wasn't given to me. I earned it. And there's like, there's like this satisfaction and this like confidence that that you build when you know that you've worked for something and you see that end result. Like there's nothing better than like seeing your project, like come to life. Yeah. And then also when, um, I find when I, when someone else does something for me, I'm just more grateful because I'm like, oh, I know how much work that was. I know the time and energy that went into it because I have been there. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what is some advice you would give young Callie? Some advice I would give young Callie. I would say, I, so I had this one situation. This is, I, I love this story. Um, so I, I'm a very, like, free, open person. Like, if I, like, there's, I'm, there are no, like, skeletons. Like, I, if you ask me a question, for the most part, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. Um, so on my social media, like this is Instagram, like first started 2000, like thing like 12, like this is like, everyone's still like new. And I take this picture. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story that happened first. So I'm at an event and this lady comes up to me that I know. She's like, hey, so I really wanted to recommend you for, you know, this ESPN job, like, you know, talking about fashion and sports. But we were sitting in the meeting with Disney, who's, you know, because ESPN is owned by Disney. I pull up your social media and the first picture that comes up is you with your thumb next to a girl's butt. Like she's in like white jeans that says, all I want for my birthday is a big booty. (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, you might want to clean up your Instagram if you want to advance. And I was like, no, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to still get to where, you know, I want to be cut to like, I would say, I would say, Girl, just clean up your Instagram. It's not that. It's, it was. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. And granted, once again, trust the process. So maybe that's not where I needed to go. Yeah. But it's like, was it that important? Like, like was it that important to to share things that might not be like that positive? Like, no, girl, just clean it up. Like, it, it's not that serious. So I would definitely tell my younger self, you know, maybe maybe be a little mindful of what you put on your social media. <laughs> You know what, though? That's so true. (laughs) It's so true. Okay, we are going to do some rapid-fire questions if you're ready. Who's your favorite client? Um, I would have to say Dwayne. Oh. Um, What is something you wish all your clients did? Listen. (laughs) (laughs) Like Callie knows. Um, Are you an early bird or a night owl? Night owl. Don't early. Really? Well, I mean... Technically, it's early because I stay up straight through. So, does that count as going to 6 a.m. to the morning? <laughs> like you like to be up all night? Yeah, I'm an all night person. Like, because I'm really social. So, it's like I during the day, I'm talking to the people, like kissing yes. babies and doing all the things. So, at night, it's the only time I can really focus. My brain doesn't start working until 10 p.m. Oh, interesting. I'm shocked I'm here talking. 
Well, thank you. <laughs> what is like a regular day for you look like? There's no such thing as a regular day at all. Yeah. Like every day is different. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to actually get a schedule, but it's just, it's schedule's not scheduling. Like it's not working. Like I'm it trying, doesn't work for you. but like, I'm also like, I re I'm a very like reactive. Like if something needs to be done, like I'm going to get it done. Yeah. So sometimes I like, I throw things in and I'm learning to be like, okay, you know what, Callianne, maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe you can not do that. Like, yeah. so it's. One day, one day I'll have a schedule, but it's not today. Yeah, I mean, if it works for you, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, um, Clark or Noel? Ooh, that's a difficult one. <laughs> oh. Ah. Ah. Oh. Just like you're on a raft. Who am I saving? The, yeah, who are you saving? Let's do that, actually. Oh, crap. I know. I know, this is terrible. I might actually save Clark. <laughs> <laughs> the one's going to kill me. <laughs> She'll be fine. She's pretty Clark. enough that someone could come along and save her. Well, I mean, Clark saved me, so. I, he I ruined. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> he ruined, he ruined my life. He saved Kellyanne's life. I know, I know. <laughs> just kidding. No, he is a good guy. He, he really but is. But you know what? It could be like the Jack from the Titanic. He's so tall. <laughs> there might not be room for him on yeah, the raft. <laughs> And I'm like, I'll never forget you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Clark. <laughs> okay. Well, Kellyanne, thank you so much for taking the time in this oh, really you. busy week. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm glad we can make this happen. For sure.